Welcome back, Nicole here with Own The Moment Booth. This is gonna be part two of our HoneyBook Smart Files automation series. If you missed the first one, click up at the link at the top, watch that one, and then come back here. This one, I'm gonna dive deeper into how I incorporate automations to make the booking process so much smoother. It's lifted a huge weight off my shoulders with a lot of the back and forth communication with my clients while still maintaining that essential kind of communication and relationship and not sounding like a robot. So I'm excited to kind of show you my process and so show you what's been working for me. I've only just recently started, but it's already been made such a huge difference. So I'm excited to share it with you today. So let's get started. <music> I'm gonna show you the process from the client side so you get to see the client and my side at the same time. Um, so I'm gonna record my screen and kind of show you. So I'm on my website under Book a Booth, which is, if you watch the first video, it's the contact form that directly connects to HoneyBook. So I'm saying my name is Jane Doe, my email, and then um, my event date, I'm just gonna say is a date in January. I'm gonna say it's just an event. So let's say it's a birthday party and then I'm gonna send my inquiry. And then I'm gonna go into HoneyBook so you can see it come in on this end. All right, here's Jane Doe's information and you're gonna see right here on my tasks, it's gonna tell me what the immediate things are that I need to do. First, confirm availability. Am I available that date? 121 2023 if i was not if i already had something booked on that day there would be um, a notice up here saying oops looks like you're booked that day or all oh, this conf conflicts with another event this is good to go i'm going to click confirm so i know that that's done i've confirmed the date and then it automatically tells me okay let's approve this smart file this smart file is my booking form that i went over in my other video and so what I could do is click that and it would go ahead and send it out with the email. But what I wanna do every single time is view my email, personalize it, um, add some details, some other questions that I maybe want answered. Um, and so I'm gonna click view edit on my task. And this is the template email that I created for this specific step and process. So this just says, thank you for your inquiry. Your date is available um, in the next process here, you know, below you'll see a link to the booking form. This is what that does. This is how you confirm your date. This just helps speed the process along so much further. Previously, what I did was I um, wrote an email saying, I am available that date. What are you looking for? Um, do you want prints? Do you want digital? Do you, um, what, you know, what kind of party is it? And, and it was a step that I thought was necessary. And I think it helped me in the beginning kind of get a feel for the business and how I wanted to communicate. Um, but now I'm finding that, um, people don't want to have a lot of back and forth. And so the less back and forth, the better. And so I feel like the, this process that I'm incorporating now has really helped with that because it's really only a couple of emails that I'm sending throughout the entire process versus like five, six, seven, you know, back and forth. Oh, like, uh, for example, like people would ask, okay, well, what if I want three hours and digital? And then I would say, okay, then it would be this much. Okay, but what if I wanna add prints? Okay, then it would be this much. Okay, but what if I wanna add, and then it was like literally dozens of emails back and forth. Whereas with this process now, and you'll see soon, it's very much kind of in the balls in their court and they get to pick and choose and see the price list updated in real time. So anyways, I'm skipping ahead. Let's focus on what we have here. So I'm going to customize it to my clients. So I'm gonna click approve and send now and it's going to send to Jane Doe. So now I'm gonna hop over to my Jane Doe email. Okay, so here's my inquiry and here's what it looks like on that end. Okay, so it says get started. So I'm gonna click get started. It's going to ask for a code. 
I really like this. This just gives so much more confidence um, for your client to know that like everything that you're doing is really legit. Um, okay, so here's my package. And you'll notice down here, you can't really see it's kind of cut off, but this says um, this reservation expires in three days. And um, so this kind of puts a little bit more understanding that this pricing doesn't last forever like a decision kind of needs to be made within the few days and then it all you'll see it up here it, it says the expiration date so i can look through all of my packages kind of see what's included in each one entertainment looks great so i'm going to select this and you're going to see up in the right hand corner it added that to my tally okay so now that's the price and then i'm going to say "Ooh, i would love to have another hour and I would love to add prints. And then let's see what else I wanna add. Ooh, I would love to have a copy of all of the prints just for me to keep. Let's add that. And that's it. So as you can see up here, my total is all added up here so they could even download it if they wanted to and keep that for their reference um, and then this goes over some of the restrictions so i need an outlet i need wi-fi i need to be under a covering you know if you don't have these things like let's chat about it and so i'm going to click next and then here i'm going to sign the contract all right signed next it's going to take me to my invoice, which reviews um, all of the things that I requested, and then also the payment. Next, payment, how I'm gonna pay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's on the client end. On my end, what I see is all of these, um, so I had to mute my phone because I was getting notifications of every single one of these um, services being added. What would happen next is once I make payment and finish the process, the next part in the automation would be the event questionnaire. Um, and this is kind of what I'm excited to show you. So as an overview for automations, you kind of saw on the client side what all that looks like, but what happens is when I build it out, this is what it looks like. And so you can add, you can copy, you can trash it all. Um, the very first step is create a task, confirm availability. And then I triggered it so that the next thing that happens after I confirm this task, um, then the next thing that happens is it's going to send out that smart file, um, which is the reservation thing. Um, after that, as soon as the client submits all of the information, then that would trigger me um, to send a thank you email uh, that says, hey, your date's confirmed, um, everything is good to go. Now the fun part is the questionnaire, which kind of goes over all of these details. All of this email can be set up however you like um, and can be edited however you like. Um, and then I'll show you what the event questionnaire looks like. And you'll see over here, it says require approval before sending. I do that for every single thing. I don't let any email go out to my clients automatically um, until I manually approve it because like I said before, I want to customize it according to my client. And so every client is different, every event is different, every situation is different. Um, so I don't really recommend having an automatic reply go out for everything. I think that just takes away from the um, personal kind of connection that you have. You never want your client to feel like they're just, you know, nobody likes to talk to a robot. So um, I definitely recommend a little bit more personalization and review each email before it goes out. Okay, so let's look at our event questionnaire. It's under um, templates. So I just created a new template um, and I made it from scratch, but here's what it looks like. And you can add pages, you can add, you can add and customize it however which way. You can use an existing template, change your theme, um, customize it according to your, customize it according to your brand, etc. 
Um, I went really simple and just added my brand colors, my logo, um, and tried to incorporate that kind of stuff. So when a client gets this email, they're going to choose the template for their photo. So regardless of getting, if they're getting a digital or if they're doing a print, um, I'm going to give them the option to have that photo booth experience of having multiple images. Um, I've, I've done several where it's just been one image with an overlay and the clients are like, Oh, it's only one photo or, Oh, you know, they don't really understand. They really uh, expect that multiple photo experience. And so whenever I do, even if I do digital, um, I allow them to kind of have the option of a custom template. Um, and that's if they choose my middle of the road package. If they don't, if they choose my essential basic package, they don't get any customization. Um, I'll, ch I'll pick a, according to like the theme or something, I'll pick something that's already made. Um, but if they do pick the middle of the line, they're going to get something customized. They're going to be able to incorporate their logo. Um, it's more, more design effort on my part. So it's a little bit extra. All right, so they're gonna be able to choose between a two by six or a four by six. I used to charge differently um, for the templates, but um, I just recently switched over to one blanket price. If they want anything, uh, any kind of prints or photos, um, it's either or two by six or four by six, they get to choose which one they want. Um, and so here they get to pick their template. So they can have two by six, four by six, or overlay. Um, the two by six is gonna give two options. I went I went with the templates that made sense to me and or that my clients have picked the most. Um, I used to only do these ones, the portrait style, and so it was the two photos with a little bit more room for logos or customized design, etc. What I'm finding now is that um, people want, especially if they're doing digital, they want something that's gonna be super social media friendly, which is going to be your square size. And so this has been very popular lately. It's the three square photos, so you get to have three pictures. There's not that much space for design, um, but it's that experience of having the three photos. So this has been very popular. Um, four by six I've also really loved for weddings. Um, they get a bigger photo um, and they get more kind of design room and then overlay I've used as well. And it's this is typically really great for um, events or um, clients that just want the one photo that has the overlay that stays on there. This is a great marketing tool, um, a great way to kind of keep your brand um, on a photo so that when it's shared, so is your brand. So this is a great way to do that. Um, and then, so I have my options here. I created these graphics in Canva, uploaded them so they had a visual representation of what it looks like. This is just one of the photos that was um, supplied by Photo Booth Supply Co. in their um, photo folder. Um, so they get to choose and they have to choose um, which one they want. And then they get to write down exactly what they want um, the bottom to say. So whether that's a logo, whether that's, you know, yeah, J uh, Joe and Maria, September 20th, 2023, um, or the Smiths, 2023, like whatever they wanna say or customize, that's where they would write that down. And any kind of specific design. So if they say we want really simple black and white or boho or glam or pink or red, like whatever color specific request, um, this would be a great place to put a link to Pinterest, to wedding website like Zola or The Knot. Um, and then I even right here, if you have a Pinterest board, event website, wedding website, whatever it is, put the link here or email it to us. Um, and then I have all of my backdrops. So I uploaded all of these images. Um, and so the client gets to pick their backdrop so they get to browse all of the images and then select from this drop down menu which one they want and then they get to choose their top to start screen i really am um and so i created this again on canva and so they get to choose do they want a photo or do they want text um and the text is going to be 
um, you know, their name or the event name or anything like that versus like an event um, file or photo. And then they get to choose from this selection and the design again, asking for that information. And that's really all I need. Um, once I have this information, I'm able to work with them and create a custom file. Um, and then what I do is I send them proofs of what that looks like and then they pick from there. I can, I can show you on another video exactly my process in using Canva and sending proofs to my clients. But basically I wanted to show you this so you see my process with how I gather information from the um, booking process through this event questionnaire um, to get all of the really little details that I need to eliminate a lot of the back and forth with clients and also provide um, and gather all the information that I need without having to write so many emails. So we've confirmed the date, we've sent out the booking form, they've made the selections, I've sent out the event questionnaire. So once they submit the event questionnaire back to me, um, it then creates tasks and reminders for me. I kind of set it, you can set it to specific dates according to your process and what works for you. I have it remind me bef 45 days before the event. Um, it'll pop up in my tasks on my dashboard and say, hey, you need to create this tap to start screen for this client for this event. Um, and it's not something I have to think like, okay, when's this event? Okay, when do I need to get them the proofs by? It's all automatically set already. Um, and so it tells me, okay, create the customized tap to start screen. Okay, create the template. Okay, create, send the proofs, um, confirm the backdrop. This is the email that I customize that kind of confirms the details of the day. So this is also one of those tasks that I have set up for myself. So a week, the week of the event, um, it will confirm what the client can expect, what the, when the client can expect me to arrive to set up, when they expect me to be done tearing down, um, when they can expect their digital captures, kind of like all of the information, answering all of the questions that you can imagine that they would have. Um, that way they know exactly what to expect from you. And then you also have clear expectations on what is promised, what is to be expected and what isn't to be expected. Um, this has been really super helpful, um, especially when you're dealing with weddings or you're talking with planners and it's kind of like, you know, your all of your communication has been with the client and maybe they're not communicating exactly with the planner um, kind of what the expectations are. And so what I found really helpful and what will be my biggest tip for you, because it's something that I've learned is make sure that you ask who the planner is, give yourself a lot of time. Um, I would say at least two weeks and if, if the week of maybe, but, um, ask the plan, ask who the planner is, get their contact information, email the planner exactly the same thing that you're emailing your client as as far as like what time you're contracted for emphasis on contracted for what time you're contracted for so what time your your photo booth is starting what time your photo booth is ending what time you're going to be there to set up and what time they can expect you there to set up and how much time you need to tear down um, also confirm with them that you need an outlet that you need Wi-Fi because you can't be hassling, especially for a wedding, you can't be hassling the bride and groom for that information. They're not gonna be helping you. And so that's definitely information that you need from the planner um, or day of coordinator or the event owner, whatever, whoever it is, confirm all of those details again with them because they're gonna be the ones that you're talking to the day of. Um, I've shown up uh, to weddings where my communication was clear on like, okay, this is the ceiling height requirement. And then I show up and the ceiling is not that high or, or it's not tall enough. And I had to make very much last minute decisions. And sometimes no matter how well you communicate, that still happens. Um, but what you can do, what you can control is your communication, um, protecting yourself on paper, on email, um, making sure that you're communicating as clearly and effectively as you possibly can. And that's really all you can do. And then you really just have to be ready to roll with the, go with the flow 
day of, and um, I've definitely had to do that multiple times. And it's kind of part of the job. So um, what I love about the automation process, what I love about the smart files is it's able to kind of, it's, it's able to lift that mental load for me of trying to keep track of all the little tasks that I need to keep track of. It's, it's all set up here and I don't have to think about it. I know that I can just check my task list on who needs what, when, when I need to email the, you know, the planner, when I need to email the bride, etc. Um, it's just been so helpful. So I'm hoping this is all making sense because this is like very much specific to me and my company and how I'm trying to organize it. This may not work for you, um, but it's definitely something to play around with. And it's just, um, especially in HoneyBook, it's so customizable. So if you're like, no, I don't want to do any of this process, you can, even if you wanted to just set up automations to remind you of tasks, like, okay, 45 days before this event comes, like remind me to send the client an email, like you can do that in this, in this program. So I think that's it. I hope it's been helpful for you. If you have any questions about smart files or the automation process, how I deal with clients or anything that has to do with this, please let me know below. Go Or you can DM me on Instagram. You can send me an email, info, info at ownthemomentboost.com. Um, I'm here, I'm wanting to help you. And um, if you have any more tips or tricks for me that would help me, that would be great. I'm all ears. Um, I love to learn new ways to kind of do things. And so let me know if you found this helpful below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share it with a friend and i will see you guys on the next one i think next i want i want to create i want to do a video for you on how i use canva um but i'm trying to find the best way to do it um so I'm, what i might do is do a holiday one because that's kind of generic across the board um and so we can work on maybe creating a holiday canva template if that sounds good for you guys um, let me know below if that sounds good and I'll see you in the next one.